Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and the peace of God our Father, the love of the Divine Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves worthily to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are counted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it, the word of the Lord. to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, because of the one who subjected it, in the hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord.
According to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, for it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. The gospels make it very clear that people clearly enjoyed listening to the Lord whenever he spoke to them. He told them stories, stories that they certainly could identify with. Stories that they always remembered. We call them the parables. And the crowds were gripped by his speech and the way he talked to them. Great compliments from the people were given to him. They said he spoke with such authority, unlike the scribes. And they came from all over and followed him throughout, just to listen to him. Or to hear him. There's a very big difference. There's a big difference in hearing someone and listening to them. Listening is something that is very, very active. And if you truly listen to a person, it can really wear you down. It tires you because your whole system is hanging on that word of the person as opposed to simply simply hearing a person speak but in the parables when our Lord demands after they listen is a decision every parable that he spoke elicited a decision from the listeners a change in the life or the behavior of the one who listens. And here we are 2,020 years later, listening or hearing perhaps the same parables, parables that we've heard since we were little kids, parables that we all remember as well. And all we need is the first few lines and we can go on with the story. We remember those stories because indeed they are so memorable. But every parable should elicit from us too a decision to make. Are we really listening to them or are we simply hearing them? Do they elicit within us a change of the way we look at the world or the way we look at ourselves or our relationship with God, our relationship with one another? The parables are not simply nice stories, but they're teachings. Teachings that make us stop and think. Am I living my life the way God wants me to live? Or am I living my life in opposition to him? In opposition to his teaching? For the next three weeks, we will hear parables in the gospel. Parables about the kingdom 
and our understanding of that kingdom of God and our growth of that understanding within us. But every time we hear a parable, it's different for us because of the circumstances we live in or the situations we find ourselves in. Every time we hear or we read the gospel, there's something new for us to hold on to. And that's the glory of God's word. That's why the gospel today is kind of opening us up to listen to God's word. How do we hear and listen to the word of God today? If I were to ask you, how many of you can tell me what the first reading was about? How many can answer that question? Were you listening to God's word or were you just hearing? And that's the difference. You need to stop whatever we're doing and listen. Listen to God. And I think we have the problem of our society that we're living in today is because people stop listening to God. Some people don't even hear him anymore. They're so wrapped up in themselves. They're so wrapped up in their own concerns that the word of God is being choked, which is one of the examples our Lord gives in the reading today. The word, the faith. For many people, sadly, the faith has been eaten up by the birds of the air. They've lost their faith. They've lost their sense of who they are in the relationship to God and to the world. And they're floundering by themselves, thinking that everything that passes by will they hold on to, only to go deeper and deeper into the abyss of absurdity and chaos. Some have that initial joy, that initial fervor, that, that zealousness of God's word, and they're on fire. Fire dies out quickly. I think for most of us, we're that third example. Where the thorns of life sometimes can choke us and choke our faith. We get so caught up in the concerns of the world, the anxieties, that we forget what God has done for us. We forget how God has sustained us. We forget to trust in God. We'll do it ourselves. And when that doesn't happen, we all kind of fall apart. We owe it to God to trust Him. He has gotten us through difficult moments already, and He'll continue to do so because He loves us. He cares for us. And even though we create the mess of the earth, he'll be there ready and willing and at the right moment to lift us up. And our trust, our faith, that was given to us on the day of our baptism, that little seed that was planted in our soul, needs to be nourished and watched over and cared for as long as we live here on earth. That faith is constantly growing in us, no matter how old we get. That faith still grows, and we still need to nurture and care for it. And that's why I'm so thrilled, week after week, the numbers are increasing of people feeling more comfortable coming back to Mass, receiving the Eucharist, which gives us supernatural strength. And one of the sadness of this pandemic is how many people were deprived of the Eucharist for all those months, deprived of that grace of God. But now, thank God, we can receive again the body and blood, soul and divinity. We as a community of faith, but that's who Catholics are. We're not a solo religion. We're a community religion where two or three are gathered, Christ said. And it's good to see the numbers each week increasing. We're coming together again as family, as we ought to be. Careful for sure. We need one another. We need the love and the support and the prayers of one another to get through this difficult moment in history. So my friends, let us not just hear God's word. Let us listen. 
let it seep into our very souls, into the very way we live our life. But we have the good news. Bring that good news out into that world. Because it desperately needs it. Let people see you. And by the way you live your life, bring people to God. It's so easily to get so absorbed in the things of the world that we forget who we are. We forget where we came from. And sadly, we forget where we're going to go. And so we stand now to profess our beautiful faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, like true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, the holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. And so God gives us love without any conditions. And so in our humility, we hold up to him our prayers and concerns. For our own country, that our leaders act with sound judgment, that citizens work together cooperatively, and, they, and do as they have been asked by the government to reduce infection rates, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the prayers and sacrifices of the concentrated religious bear, fruit, bear great fruit for the church and the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from physical and spiritual hunger, to be filled with healing goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed from our parish, who have gone before us in faith and love, may they receive the reward of their goodness, and let us remember in a special way at this Mass, Nora McGinnis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, bringer of the harvest, you give us every good thing. Grant these prayers which we ask in faith and through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs> setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and so entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. From the history of faith. giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, 
with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our beloved patroness, St. Margaret, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait your blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. those who cannot now receive Holy Communion, we call for the prayer of acts of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacraments. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you 
never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock here in church, we will offer a rosary for our peace and tranquility in our country. So if you're available tomorrow night here in church, we also have exposition and benediction as well. Also, we can't, of course, give out bulletins anymore, but the bulletins are still done every week, and they're online on our website. So if you need any information about the uh, parish, 
it's on, on our line, on our website, so we uh, access the bulletin that way every week. Have a wonderful, happy Sunday to you and to your family. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking ruin of souls. Amen.